if you want to get the silkiest most long lasting silk press straight hair routine this video is for you it doesn't matter what your hair texture is your hair length this is for you to get the best silk press you could possibly get on your own hair broken down to a T and you don't want to miss any of these tips because missing just one of them could be detrimental to your silk press this is week four hair i've had this straight hair for almost one month now and look at it it's only starting to get a little bit heavy now look at this look at that smooth look at look at my ends i have not passed a straightener a blow dryer no heat has touched my hair since over three weeks ago not even dry shampoo okay so if you want to get these kind of results stay tuned because i am breaking every single tip down okay so the first tip is first because it is the one that requires the most amount of work and if you're watching this and you're trying to straighten your hair tomorrow it may be too late to implement this step but if you're thinking about straightening your hair in you know a couple weeks or so this tip will be your best friend and this is focus on the health of your hair starting from a minimum of one month before now listen we all want to have healthy hair and focus on healthy hair throughout the entire year right that's being ideal just like we want to go to the gym every single day but sometimes you just kind of neglect your hair a little bit and you might even want to straighten your hair because you are so sick of dealing with your hair in whatever natural state that is and I stick to a very strict routine that works great for my own hair because whether your hair is straight or curly but mostly when it's straight because straight hair reveals all your mistakes it reveals if your trim is jagged it reveals if you have more split ends than you thought so the best straight hair you can get is when your hair is at its healthiest state it doesn't matter what the length of your hair is it doesn't matter what texture your hair is if your hair is really healthy it will always look the best so when i say one month before care i'm not saying every day for a single month you're going to be doing all these different treatments and things to your hair no what you're just going to focus on is having four amazing washes assuming that you wash and deep condition your hair at least once a week if you do it more than once then fine but at least once a week do one deep treatment okay which means you want to deep condition your hair every single time you wash it once a week you want to moisturize your hair and so mainly we're focusing on moisture because dry hair is usually what affects straight hair the most the second thing you need to do is to do a protein treatment at least once now there are so many different protein and bond building treatments out there i'm putting them in the same category because people have their preferences it's all kind of in the same family and what this does is make sure that you strengthen your hair before you add a lot of stress on it because blow drying is not too bad but flat ironing takes a lot of damage to the hair you're literally breaking down the chemical bonds of your hair to make it stay straight also if you naturally have straight hair you can still get heat damage okay it's just that when you have curly hair it's easier to tell when you have heat damage so what treatments do i recommend first of all i recommend doing it one week before so the week immediately before you do your straight hair I would suggest you do it then if you want to do it two weeks before that's fine as well but i think a week before is much much better so my treatment of choice is k18 and k18 is extremely expensive but it is worth the money it does do the job i haven't used the second one that i'm recommending but i have seen so many people across different hair textures use it and the results are usually very similar to k18 it's not the exact same thing, but it is very similar. The Redken Acidic Bonding Concentrate. I've also tried a couple other products from Redken and I've really liked them, so I feel comfortable recommending this. So if K18 is too expensive, I'd suggest you try the Redken. And of course, one of the ones that was the first in its kind that many people love is Olaplex. Olaplex number three, but from what I've seen, pairing number zero and number three together will give you the best bang for your buck. Now, you might be thinking, this is something very expensive to do before I straighten my hair. Now, if you're someone who wears their hair straight all the time and you don't really worry about your curls getting a little bit damaged or anything like that because you wear your hair straight anyway, you may not 
you might not need to focus that heavily on like getting every single thing right and you probably already know how to straighten your hair pretty well but if you do this once in a while like i do this is the first time this entire year that i've straightened my hair i go all out because i want to get the best results without causing any hair damage and also should i ever decide to start wearing my hair straight more often i still want to preserve my curls so that when i want to wear my hair curly i can still wear it wear it curly and have it look amazing even if you don't want to wear your hair curly if your curls can bounce back that means your hair is healthy if you don't want to use the three that i have recommended and you want to maybe straighten your hair more often you really should look into it if you want to straighten your hair more often but if you're looking for something that's more like a deep conditioner that you can use even if you're not going to be straightening your hair i would suggest amika's the cure deep conditioner because it is the perf it is the perfect balance it has like a bonding complex in it like a protein treatment technically but it also has a moisturizing quality for it for me most of the time with all the bond building treatments that i've used even the ones i've recommended i find that it doesn't really leave my hair feeling more hydrated or moisturized it just does exactly what it says it builds the bonds the moisture stage is up to you you can do a deep conditioner do another treatment to make up for that but that's not what that's targeted at so if you do like an olaplex number three and you're like this hasn't made my hair feeling nice and soft and shiny and healthy that's because that's not its job it came to build your bonds the moisturizing nourishing part that's your job find another product to do that the third thing you can do is use a clarifying shampoo this is extremely important because sometimes you can't physically see the buildup on your hair it just feels like no matter how much you wash it it still has a little bit of like a greasy feeling or a sticky feeling or you know when you pass a straightener down your hair and it does that like tugging dragging thing even though you're not holding it too tight it just feels like it's kind of getting stuck on your hair that is most likely because of buildup and this also helps if you are very prone to dandruff i don't think you can really see it right now but because this is week four of my straight hair i do finally have quite a bit of dandruff now but it's expected it's four weeks okay without washing my hair but if you're getting dandruff on the first day and you don't have something like seborrheic dermatitis it might just be built up from your products so what you want to use and also this helps make your hair be very nice and sleek because it absorbs all the products that you're using properly and gets rid of all the silicones and build up especially if you use drugstore shampoos and a lot of drugstore products a lot of these leave some kind of film on your hair or they have more ingredients that make your hair like look artificially nice even though it's not necessarily doing that you want to use a clarifying shampoo because it removes buildup it removes any like heavy metals and it also cleans your scalp the best so the one i would suggest which is my favorite one because it's the one i use it's the red can cleansing cream i know it says cleansing cream but it's just a it is a cleansing shampoo that also removes the heavy metals all that kind of stuff that is my favorite one and it does the job it is so strong it leaves your hair feel, feeling squeaky clean but not dry at all it almost feels like you use a sulfate free shampoo so i don't know how they did that but it is absolutely amazing especially for a detox shampoo just go the professional route the bottle is going to last you forever because you don't use detox shampoo every single week and it is extremely worth the money you need very little and it just makes so much sense so the other popular one is the one by way i've never used that but i have heard people say it is a little bit drying but it really does the job so if you don't have naturally dry hair that may be a great option for you sorry i have a cold if my voice sounds a little strange and then the olaplex 4c that should be their clarifying shampoo i have heard amazing things about that people say that it leaves their hair feeling squeaky clean but not dry but i have heard people who say that they have naturally very oily and fine hair say that it may feel like it weighs their hair down a little bit i know i would not have to worry about that because i have naturally dry hair and it's a little bit heavy but the only one i personally use is the red can so that's the one i'm going to recommend also none of these products are sponsored but they all will be listed in the description box below and i think on the screen youtube might pop one up or something like that i don't know but yes the next thing i mentioned is something that i alluded to earlier on but i didn't go into detail and this is you want your hair to be heavily moisturized but not with a heavy film of product on it so you should use a deep conditioner but i will say don't go for conditioners that are specifically targeted to naturally curly hair whether you have fine hair thin hair 
thick hair this is because a lot of products that are targeted at naturally curly hair they have quite a bit of oils in them and they can be a little bit heavy for straight hair because when you have curly hair most of us don't like a lot of shrinkage okay even if the products are not very heavy sometimes just a little bit of that oily kind of texture just helps kind of weigh the hair down a little bit which is actually what you want because it makes your curls a little bit heavier and they look nicer and it kind of holds the the curls together makes them stick together really well and it makes the curls look so nice and defined and moisturized and curly hair is more prone to dryness so we need to put as much product as possible that will help keep the moisture in for longer but when you want straight hair you want your hair to be light you want it to be feathery you want it to last for a really long time so that by the time it's getting heavy it's very close to wash day if your hair is heavy on day one you don't want that because you're probably only going to have your hair for like a max of one week and if that's all you're going for sure you might want to go for it but you still don't want heavy hair even on day one now my favorite one is again amika the soul food nourishing mask that is my favorite deep conditioner of all time i mean since i started doing my own hair i don't know how long it's been 10 years i don't know but i have tried a lot of deep conditioners whatever it's targeted to natural hair, curly hair, whatever it is, relaxed hair, I have tried a lot of deep conditioners. And this one, this one always comes out on top. It is my number one, I recommend it to everyone. And I have seen people with the finest hair to the thickest hair, to the coarsest hair, to the silkiest hair, absolutely love this mask. And a little bit goes a long way. So it's you can use it on your curly hair, you can use it on your straight hair, but it is on the heavier side the way it feels so it could weigh your hair down if you go overboard so just don't use too much product or use less than usual i've also used the olaplex one which is extremely lightweight and i think would be great for everyone as well that's the olaplex number eight there are some other deep conditioners out there but these are the ones that i would recommend the most because they are extremely hydrating and moisturizing and the reason why you want your hair to be as moisturized as possible when you straighten it is because your hair is always searching for moisture so if your straight hair is extremely dry it's going to frizz up and get curly much faster because it's seeking moisture from the air and absorbing it into your hair and it is more prone to puff up and get curly and get frizzy because it's so dry if your hair is already hydrated it's not really looking for moisture elsewhere okay that's the reason why you want it to be hydrated and moisturized okay so the next thing is very similar to the deep conditioning stage and this is always use a leave-in product because when you moisturize that hair with your deep conditioner after you rinse that out if you just leave the hair out open all that moisture is just going to evaporate from the hair so you want to put something that's going to maintain the moisture in the hair from the inside and the outside so i suggest two leave-in products one that's very watery to kind of penetrate your hair shaft and moisturize your hair from the inside out and then one product that's going to sort of coat the hair on the top but still be extremely lightweight for the leave-in product i have tried so many and i do have my favorites for my curly hair but for straight hair i have a new favorite i've been using it for the past i think i used it for maybe three weeks before i straightened my hair and when i straightened my hair i used it as well this is the ultimate leave-in conditioner. I would be the brand ambassador for this product. It is amazing. This is the Purology Color Fanatic. This is the best leave-in I've ever used before. A little goes a long way. And for some reason, I don't know how it does it, but it helps stretch the hair a little bit. When I used it on my own hair, I was doing braid outs and it felt like my hair was blow dried. Like from the scalp, the hair was more stretched. Even when I unbraided the hair, it was like, way longer and more defined and when my sister came to do a wash day here she wanted to test out a few products before she buys them i told her to use the purology only on one part of her hair because it's a little bit expensive quite expensive actually i told her to use it on one part of her hair so that she could see if there's a difference between that part and the other side in case she doesn't need it and we could all tell on the exact point where she used the purology because it elongated her curls and her curls were more defined. She did a wash and go and she has type three hair and her curls were more elongated and softer on that side, but still very defined. So I, I really recommend this as a leave-in product. And then as my second product, which should also be like your blowout cream, I would suggest Olaplex number six. If you don't get any Olaplex product in your life, I highly suggest Olaplex number six. This is the Bond Smoother. I have been using this for years now. I'm like on my fourth bottle or something like that. 
it is extremely amazing i've also heard of blow dry creams from redken they all have like a little bit of heat protection in them but they're also extremely moisturizing and very smoothing like they really you can feel them smooth your hair shaft when you apply them to your hair the last leave-in product i'm suggesting does not moisturize your hair or do anything like that i think this product has one job and it does it well this is the color wow i am absolutely shocked by this product and i think it is largely responsible for why my hair is this straight like look at my ends why my hair is this straight and still flowy and has not an ounce of frizz on the hair shaft the color wow dream coat is amazing and this its sole purpose is to fight frizz and get your hair as straight as possible and prevent it from absorbing moisture now i've seen a lot of ads that says it makes your hair waterproof and stuff like that listen i'm not gonna drop water on my hair i'm not gonna spray water on my hair because i'm not going to be in those conditions okay if i was in those conditions i would not even straighten my hair in the first place that's just something to show the efficacy of the product to say that yes if you put a drop of water it's probably gonna slide off your hair right but if you wet your hair if you want a product that's going to make your hair completely bone straight even when you spray water on it and even when you pour and dump water on it and it's not going to curl back up you are looking for a keratin treatment or a relaxer okay anything else you want it to be effective up to a certain point or else it's literally breaking down your curls permanently okay but if you want something that's going to prevent you from getting frizz or anything like that color wow is amazing and the good thing with this product is the only way you can go wrong with color wow is using too little and that is amazing because when we're straightening our hair we are trying to use as few products as possible to get the maximum benefits so that our hair is not like heavy the color wow literally feels like water it has a really good like professional smell and when you spray it in your hair it actually suggests that you should be extremely generous like douse your hair in it so that makes it quite expensive because you have to use a lot but again i don't straighten my hair very often so it is worth the money i sprayed a lot of this in my hair very generously and it's just like water and when you apply it on your hair it should feel like nothing the sixth thing you need to do is one thing that i think is extremely important a lot of people say this is not important but i beg to differ this is using a professional blow dryer. Now listen, I have used a lot of blow dryers in my life, okay? Also, my mom owned a hair salon at one point, like when I was a kid, so there were many different blow dryers that went through there as well, okay? And I used to go to hair salons when I was younger. When I had relaxed hair, I'd go to, blow, to different hair salons, okay? So I have seen a lot of blow dryers. I have owned like six different blow dryers in my lifetime, okay? And the one I have now, nothing can compete with it that i've ever had in the past okay absolutely love it absolutely recommend this is the ghd i can't remember <laughs> i'll link it in the description box below but it's the ghd iron something i don't know it's a professional blow dryer okay and it has the really tiny nozzle i think having a good concentration nozzle is a good idea as well the ghd is my favorite one it's the best blow dryer it prevents my hair from getting that like dry stringy feeling that you get from blow dryers it doesn't give you that like burnt hair smell that blow dryers give it doesn't like smoke up unless I don't know what products you've put in your hair if you're just looking for another professional hair dryer that I have never used before but absolutely would love to try is the Dyson okay that seems to work for every single person I'm not talking about the air wrap or the air straight I'm talking about the Dyson blow dryer that's the one Dyson product I've seen work across the board for everyone smooths the hair leaves the hair feeling great cuts down your blow drying time i think it's extremely worth the money i would absolutely purchase one it's just that i already have a ghd which basically does the same thing it's extremely efficient i have no use to try a dyson blow dryer unless i want to review it or i'm working with the company or something like that otherwise it costs a lot of money to do something very similar to a product i already have so if you already have a professional blow dryer you don't have to get the ones that i've recommended or the one that i have but if you are looking for a new professional blow dryer i really suggest you invest in one because professional blow dryers are meant to be used heavily 
probably every single day in like a hair salon setting so when you use it yourself it's probably gonna last you like 10 20 years it's never gonna get damaged the next thing that i would suggest that goes perfectly with your professional blow dryer is a professional flat iron okay i have also owned many flat irons in the past and i even have another professional option which is ceramic but i would really suggest a titanium one however if this is the first time you're still pressing your hair or straightening your hair i would not suggest titanium because the heat distribution is not as even as a ceramic plate it does make your hair smoother and shinier and straighter and sleeker looking however you are more prone to heat damage as well because the plates do get hotter the heat distribution is not as even and just the type of metal itself is the most volatile compared to other ones so if you're not experienced and you don't know how to flat iron your hair properly you have a way higher chance of getting heat damage of burning your hair or anything like that so i would suggest you practice with a ceramic version that's maybe not as expensive and then you can graduate to the titanium so i was using the sadu flat iron and it did the job really really well it had nice beautiful white plates but i also wanted to not use it anymore on my channel specifically because i think it's out of stock everywhere and so if i recommend it then you wouldn't be able to buy it but i believe babyless or babyless also has ceramic flat irons and a lot of people love those however once you're ready for the big guns you know i would suggest the babyless pro prima 3000 nano titanium i know very long name it's the best flat iron i've ever had it's given me the best straight hair ever it is the most amazing flat iron i have ever used i can't believe i didn't get it sooner but it just wasn't time okay now i've mastered the art i know the techniques i know the hand motions so i'm brave enough to use it and i think it makes a big difference now up until this point if you're thinking this seems too expensive for me i don't want to do this much you need to weigh out whether you want to wear your hair straight, whether you want to wear your hair straight often, whether you want healthy hair if you're on a hair growth journey or a healthy hair journey, whether you want short hair or long hair. Again, I keep reiterating, healthy hair always looks the best. And these are the best products that will give you the healthiest looking hair. If you don't want that or you think this is too expensive or you only do this like maybe once a year, if you have a hair salon that does straight hair really well, whatever the texture of your hair is, I would suggest you just go to a hair salon and get it done and it will, it will be way cheaper and you probably get less heat damage or anything like that because you have a professional doing it, hopefully that you've researched and that you can trust. However, if you want to be doing this as years come, over the months, over the years, whether you want to do it once, four, 15 times a year, whatever you want to do, if you want to get the best results and keep the healthiest hair, this is the route that you need to go because it's the decision that you're making by deciding to wear your hair straight for however long you choose to. The next thing you need to do to get the silkiest silk press that lasts is to use heat protectant, okay? This goes back to healthiest hair looking the best. Also, most heat protectants have some element of like shine in them that makes your hair look even shinier and sleeker and smoother and it just makes your hair look overall better. But with the flat iron section, I like to use a serum. Now you can use a spray if you want, but I think serums work best. This time I used the Olaplex number no. 8 and I really liked it. It is a completely different serum from any serum I've ever used before because it pumps out like a serum, but when you rub it between your palms, it emulsifies like a leave-in cream, which I did not expect, but it made my hair feel very nice, very soft, and the heat protection is up to 450 degrees. The other heat protectants and serums that I really like are BioSilk, the John Frieda Frizzies, these two, however, are targeted at people with thicker and a little bit coarser hair. So if you have finer, lighter hair, you want to use a very, very tiny amount. I think because the Olaplex is less of an oily serum and more of like a creamy product, you can get away with using possibly a little bit more because I just did my sister's hair again as well and I used way more than I used in my own hair and her hair is a little bit finer and sleeker than mine and it didn't make her hair heavy. So... I would suggest the Olaplex for across the board, but there are so many heat protectant serums out there. I think even Redken has a good one, so feel free to choose there. Here, we're just focusing on not getting any heat damage. The next best thing you want to do is to use 
the chase method. Now it's very popular to use a rat tail comb or just a tiny comb to chase the flat iron with as you flat iron your hair. It just doesn't work very well because you have to kind of focus on balancing the comb and balancing the flat iron. I find that I get the best results all across the board if I use a brush. If you can find a heat resistant brush like a boar bris bristle brush, like a boar bristle brush that has hard enough teeth to get through all your hair. When you brush it down, that would be ideal. But if you can only find a plastic brush, that is fine. But you have to make sure that the brush doesn't touch your flat iron because it's going to melt the bristles onto your flat iron and you don't want to do that. So if you go for like a more natural brush that doesn't burn or let me just say a heat, a heat resistant brush, that would be most ideal. You're not going for something like a tangle teaser like this. You're going for something that has very fine bristles that are very, very close together to kind of evenly separate your hair. Now here is one thing that drives me crazy, especially when I see professional hairstylists do this. This is a hack to avoid heat damage and patches of hair. You see people who have hair where like they get the kind of heat damage where their hair is curly until here and then they have like a gap like this where the hair is like straight and damaged and then it gets curly again at the ends. Sometimes that's because of the way you hold the flat iron. Let's say my fingers are the flat iron and this is the brush with the chase method. This is what I see a lot of people doing. They get a piece of hair like this and then they go with a flat iron like this and they go on the roots and then they pause while it's hot then they pick up the brush and then they do this and then they go down with the flat iron you have just added two to five times the amount of heat on that little patch where the flat iron was paused what you want to do is brush your hair out Put the brush there in advance before you get the flat iron then you get the flat iron do however many passes you do on the root and then just come down easily that's going to avoid that huge demarcation line of damage that a lot of people get i can't believe it every single time i see a professional person do this when you're an amateur and you're learning you're just trying to figure out how to match the movements but as a professional person when you do this i really look at you with a side eye now the 10th thing you need to do to make your hair look its best and be nice and flowy and last for a really long time is the thing that everybody hates to do, okay? This is a cut or a trim. You want to trim off as much damage as possible. And this means cut as much as you need to, but as little as you have to, especially if you're trying to grow your hair out. If you usually like shorter hair and you wear your hair in a bob, this is no issue for you. You're just going to cut it, cut above the damage and you'll be good. However, if you're trying to grow your hair out like me, every time you're cutting your hair, you don't like the idea of cutting it because you're like, I want to maintain my length. The thing is health over length every single time. Even if people tell you your hair is the same length, your hair doesn't grow. It doesn't matter because your hair is going to be healthy. Okay. Healthy hair that is short is still better than long and healthy hair. Long and healthy hair just looks terrible. Your ends kind of stick together. Your hair has no flow because all your ends are so rough and frizzy. They also attract more moisture because they're rough and dry and that makes your ends start to revert and then that goes up. And once you have a slight bit of reversion of your, of your roots and your ends, your entire straight hair look is just ruined, okay? So as soon as you're done with the flat iron part, just cut off as much of the dead ends as you possibly can and your hair would look so good. I mean, look at my hair. It looks like I trimmed it today. Look how smooth my ends are. Like, no reversion, no frizz. Now, this video is only targeted at how to achieve the best hair, but not how to maintain it. So if you want to maintain it and figure out how I kept my hair looking this good for almost four weeks now, make sure you subscribe because the next video that I'm posting is going to be exactly how to maintain your straight hair for as long as you want to. So if that seems interesting, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get the notification when I post it. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Watch the video right here if you'd like to see how I actually did this, like the food demo. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.